Remember, when we're talking about the eyelids, the eyelids are referred to as the palpebrae. And so therefore this slit between them is known as the palpebral fissure. Okay, on either end of that, we're going to have the lateral canthus or commissure, medial canthus or commissure. Whether you call it canthus or commissure, that doesn't matter to me. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to cut along the edge of the eyelid on both the upper and lower eyelid, and then we're going to extend our incision back this way. Now, if we look really closely at the edge of these eyelids, we may be able to see little tiny spots, little foci. Those little foci are where our tarsal glands are. Okay, so now we can see some very light pink muscle fibers that encircle the eye. And because it goes around the eye, it's the orbicularis oculi muscle. Okay, this is going to be responsible for closing the eye. Now realize that we do have the eyelids tagged down on either side so that when it closes, it doesn't close like a sphincter. Okay, so it does close like a flap, like what you would expect. Okay, now we're not going to dissect out, but there is a muscle that is one of the periorbital muscles that whose tendon comes up and goes into the upper eyelid and is responsible for elevating the upper eyelid. And because it elevates the upper eyelid, it is known as the levator palpebrae superioris. Okay, so I do want you to know that muscle. Now we're going to further our incision here and find what it is that closes off the orbit in the dog. Okay. And we are already starting to see a very dense fibrous band here, which is the orbital ligament. Okay, notice you can also see right here the portions of the conjunctiva. So that portion that is on the eyelid itself is the palpebral conjunctiva. Then it reflects at the fornix and comes back over the sclera of the eye here, attaching to the limbus as the bulbar conjunctiva. Here we can also see nicely the third eyelid right there. Okay, so I'm going to further clean up this orbital ligament. So here we see that orbital ligament. Okay, now hold on a sec. You see here in the large animal, the zygomatic process of the frontal bone and the frontal process of the zygomatic bone close off the orbit. Now back to this specimen. If we transect that orbital ligament and reflect it up, we can see some glandular tissue right here, which is the lacrimal gland. Remember the lacrimal gland is going to supply most of the aqueous portion of the tear film. The gland of the third eyelid is going to supply about a third of that aqueous layer. Then we have the conjunctiva, which is going to supply the glycosaminoglycan layer, which is important for breaking the surface tension so the aqueous layer lays over the cornea. And then you can see little tiny spots spots in here, which are the, yeah, let's see if it's showing up a little bit better, right about in here is where the tarsal glands are emptying in. Remember the tarsal glands supply the oily portion of the tear film that helps prevent the evaporation. 
All righty. Okay, so here we have a bovine eye. We still have all the extraocular muscles attached. A lot of fat here. You can see the optic nerve coming out here. We see the cornea. The sclera here is covered by, remember, the bulbar conjunctiva. And it looks like we got a little bit of the third eyelid here. So we have some palpebral conjunctiva here too. So we're going to cut away all of this. So here now we have removed all the extraocular muscles and most of the bulbar conjunctiva. We can see the, and the junction here is the limbus. The right about here we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a cut here through the cornea. Then we're going to make a cut at the equator. Remember that the optic nerve comes out not at the posterior pole but ventral to it. We don't have a blind spot when we see. Okay, so now we can see here we have this gelatinous mass which is the vitreous body. You can see here, let me grab the scalpel to point things out. You can see the sclera, which remember is dense irregular connective tissue. That's our outer fibrous tunic here. We see the black choroid, which in this region here becomes the tapetum lucidum. And then this inner kind of opaque coating here is the pars optica retina. Okay, You can see how that pars optica retina comes really tight right there. That's the optic disc which is giving rise to our optic nerve. Okay, So now with the vitreous body mostly removed we can see how the pars optica retina ends right here at the aura serrata. It is then going to continue over the ciliary bodies as the pars ciliaris retina. And we can't see that except microscopically, but you can see the ridges here of the ciliary body. So those are the ciliary processes. Now the lens is adhered to those via zonular fibers. Okay? So here now we've removed Part of the cornea so we can see the iridocorneal angle was right here we can now better see the iris and the pupil and the lens is on the other side of the pupil here okay so remember our outer fibrous coat is the cornea the sclera and the junction here is the limbus our middle vascular coat is the iris the ciliary body and the choroid and then our inner neuroepithelial tunic is our pars optica retina our pars ciliaris retina which is microscopic and then on the posterior side of our iris is the pars aridica retina okay so the, so we have the zonular fibers or ciliary zonules that are attaching the lens to those ciliary processes. Remember within the ciliary within the ciliary body of the ciliary muscle which when contracted is going to loosen these fibers make the lens round and so that we can better see close things. Let's better expose here our tapetum lucidum and our tapetum nigrum. Okay?